Paranorm podcast contains content that might not be suitable for some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. This is Paranorm Podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Paranorm Podcast, the show where we talk about all things true crime and paranormal. I am Emily. I'm Sierra. And we're just so happy you're back to (laughs) listening to us uh, because this week we're going to talk about a really cool place. Um, But first, Sierra, how are you? How are we doing? Doing pretty good, actually. Yeah. I would say. Let me move my mic a little bit closer to my face here. Um... So, this week, we are going to talk about a really cool place, Mm -hmm. um, a place that we just got back from. Um, Oh. Oh, yeah. You know. You know what place we're talking about. (laughs) You don't know how far I fucking fell into a wormhole, though, but you definitely know what place we're talking about. Um, Also, Sierra and I just got back from a vacation, a 10-day vacation. Mm Mm-hmm. We spent four days at this place, pretty mm-hmm. sure. We don't honestly know. It sounds about right. Uh, we spent way too long in the car. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. So much time in the car. Mags is over it. Like, if I even say the the word mm-hmm. ride now, she just instantly rolls her eyes. Look, oh, God. <laughs> so, there she is making her appearance mm-hmm. now. Um, a little shake off she just did. Um, but, yeah, so... We, we had a pretty good week. It was really nice. Yeah, I would say so. The first, the farthest, the longest I've ever been, like, in the car is 80 hours. Oh, my goodness. Like, so. Like, at one stretch of time? No. Oh, okay. But we were driving, like, uh, during this vacation, we drove the car for 80 hours. Oh, I don't even know how long we drove, because we first went to Massachusetts, and that was... 20, 21, 21 hours. One, yeah. And we took the scenic route, so that added some time to it. And then um, we went to Maine from Massachusetts, and that was a six hour drive. Mm-hmm. Well, it was supposed to be a six hour yeah. drive. And that wow. got added to <laughs> two hours to it because Sierra forgot her phone somewhere. But um, that yeah, was. Just keeping it interesting. Yeah, you know. Um, Anyway, so we're, we're like, if, if it's possible, we're, we're tired from a vacation. Yeah, I th- think that's pretty much how most people feel, actually, after they get off vacation. Yeah, because it was exhausting. But, um, here's my phone. Let me make sure my phone's on silent. Because that's all we need is that knocking in the background. I don't have my phone. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> uh, see, there we go. <laughs> There's the sensors going off. Oh my god, I can't believe they're still together after all the shit they've been through. Who? Your ass cheeks. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) I'm only not (laughs) laughing because I'm trying really hard not to spit the tea all over the microphone. Oh my, oh my gosh, I can't believe you did it so soon. <laughs> so I have, just came pouring out. Yeah, it just like came pouring out. But like, <laughs> I just, I crack myself up with my own j- jokes and most of the time I'm just really impressed I can get through it. <laughs> so, <laughs> God. Okay. After I played into that very well. You did. <laughs> I was like, what the heck? What kind I of segue knew. is that? <laughs> I knew. What I knew was like, um, I, was, I was thinking about it because I told Sierra I had a joke for her, but I didn't tell her when I was going to do it or what the setup was or anything like that. But um, I knew that <laughs> it takes you a minute to get what I tell you sometimes. So I was like, I wonder how long this is going to pause out. So there's a nice little pause while Sierra was drinking her tea as well. So, <laughs> uh, I mean, once you said it, like I did get it, but like I didn't know that I was falling into the hole. I was falling into it. I only realized afterwards that you had dug a hole. <laughs> oh god. Or maybe I dug the hole for you and then I fell into it. Basically. <laughs> anyway. 
for reals this time. We <laughs> we are talking about after all this build up this week. We are talking about Acadia National Park. Um, it is beautiful there. Would like, recommend. Ten out of ten would recommend. Um, it's no glacier, even though I haven't been there. It's no glacier. <laughs> glacier is literally like my 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 place. The place, the one place I want to go to. Mm-hmm. Everybody's like, where? If you could go to one place in the world, where would you go to? I'm like Glacier National Park. They're like, no, 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 in the world. I'm like. Let me check off this first. I haven't even thought about another option since I was 10, so... Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about this one first. Um, but anyway, so this week we're going to talk about another national park, which seriously is so, so pretty. Um, Acadia, uh, which seriously, if you haven't been to, you should go. It's beautiful. Uh, but yeah, so that's what we got for you guys this all week. All right. To start off, I got all of my info from a couple different sites. By a couple, I mean a good many. Um, One's the, oh lord, I know I'm going to butcher this, abbeymuseum.org, costaricantimes.com, ellsworthamerican.com, med, medible, medible? We're going to go with medible.org. It's it's a a laboratory, so it's med and then ible.org. Uh, medible. Medible. Mm. .org. And then uh, Reddit and uh, the YouTube, as my parents <laughs> so lovingly call. Everything. Everything. <laughs> Everything has the that in front of it. The Walmart, the Amazon Prime, the YouTube. And um, now it's just like a habit of me saying it because it makes me laugh so hard every mm. time. Um, because my dad will literally call me and go, you have the Amazon Prime, right? <laughs> Like, I don't know why that's a thing. Like, why is it the, like, I guess, like, it's a in- new institution or something. I don't know. Who knows? I just find it really, really fucking funny. Hello. Okay. Um, but, yeah, I find it absolutely hilarious every single time they do it. Mm-hmm. Because they just play right into it, too. Because <laughs> they don't even know you're, like, no. joking, kind of making fun of yeah. them. <laughs> Uh, so for a bit... I guess now they do, but... <laughs> well, now they do. Well, my dad probably doesn't listen anymore, so... Well... My mom definitely does. She's, she's, <laughs> she's like, when does the podcast come back out? <laughs> <laughs> we love you. She's just precious. Um, so, here we go. For a bit of history about Acadia National Park, mm-hmm. it was established first as Sur de Mons. Best French accent right there, guys. <laughs> um, National Monument in July 1960, but not, not 1960, no, 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 1916, by President Woodrow Wilson, but then it was changed to Lafayette National Park in February 1919, when it became the first national park east of the Mississippi. Um, it was not until January 1929 that it was officially named Acadia National Park. Now, this little tidbit of history is odds just the white people history, Mm. Um, because before it was inhabited by the Wabanaki people, and Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry if I did not pronounce that right. Please don't yell at me. Just send me the pronunciations, uh, because I want to learn. (laughs) Yeah, I want to get it right for you guys. Yes, and I would appreciate you not yelling. Um, or the, they were also called the people of the Dawnland, um, which were actually a combination of four tribes that inhabited Maine. And, um, most of the reports of, like, the paranormal origins and their legends and stories and stuff, Mm -hmm. like, like, have continued on. Okay. And I feel like that's where most of the stuff that I'm going to talk about has, like, its root. Um, So let's get into this because holy fucking shit is there a lot to get into. (laughs) So originally I was just going to talk about the aliens. Yeah. Like, because I found a really cool article and I thought I'd found a documentary. Ended up being a completely (laughs) different thing. Um, But then I kind of fell down like a giant wormhole, like I stated. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) And like literally everything that you could possibly think of paranormal wise Mm -hmm. is in this place. Oh my goodness. Like there's ghosts, there's cryptids, there's... Freaking aliens. Mm. So, and Emily is going to be squealing in her seat right now. <laughs> uh, not me, Emily. One of our friends, Emily, um, is obsessed with cryptids. So, hello, Emily. Um, anyway, so, basically, all that is to say, Acadia is a hot spot for activity. Um, it's just so much, so much, so much going on. I covered a, a little bit of it because we would be sitting here for 10 plus fucking hours if I covered everything that was mm, going on. Gotcha. 
Also, I should have brought my freaking gross Diet Pepsi in here. <sighs> to yeah. slow down. You want me to get it? Can you? Yeah. Okay. As we pause for Sierra to get my Diet Pepsi, mm. even though I cannot stand Diet Pepsi, this is my option right now. <sighs> Diet Pepsi is so gross. But I need something to wet my whistle. <laughs> Good thing you can whistle. I sure can. Can you, like, you can, like, barely whistle, right? Yes, barely. Okay. I'm going to call out my brother right now. My brother Grayson cannot whistle whatsoever, and I find <laughs> it absolutely hilarious. Um, and then my my mom. Okay, so I have, I have two moms, and I don't like referring to one of my moms as my stepmom because it's just rude, just not pleasant. So Wendy can whistle. Mm -hmm. That is my... Ter we just don't use the word stepmom. The only kind of steps we have are the ones you go upstairs with. Your dad's mom. My, my dad's mom? No. <laughs> your, da your, no. <laughs> your dad's wife. Definitely not a thing. <laughs> your dad's wife. No, she's my mom. Um, Wendy. Wendy. Okay. Who is technically my stepmom, but we just don't use that term. Um, she can whistle. Your Georgia mom. My Georgia mom. There we go. And then my other mom, Dottie. Um, the one who's probably lis listening right now, so thank you. Uh, she also cannot whistle. Um, and I'm in good company. <laughs> <laughs> so, it just, it, it's so funny how some people can do some things like that. Like, mm -hmm. you know how some people can roll their tongues mm -hmm. and some people can't? Yep. Like, I can make that ghost shape with my tongue. It's an upside down ghost. Anyway, you're too far away to look at me right now. I don't but feel like staring at your tongue. Is <laughs> a fun way to spend our time. Anyway, so, um... I think my I think my mom Dottie can r roll her tongue. I'm pretty sure she can. Can you like flip it over? I don't know. I've never tried. <laughs> no. <Nope. laughs> <laughs> I wish you guys could see the stuff we we're doing right now because oh man. I can do it this way. I can do no, that. No, my tongue's not big enough for that. Also, my mouth is really small. <laughs> Okay, let's move on before this dives deep into something we really don't want to talk about. Um, I figured out how to make the text bigger on the iPad, and honestly, I'm really impressed with myself. Way to go. Um, I can't see. I think that's been established, but, like, I cannot see, and I'm using Sierra's iPad still because my computer is very loud. Um, so. And temperamental. Yeah. <laughs> but, um. Yeah, anyway, I know I say um a lot, but it's my thinking word. So, hmm. here we go. We're going to start first with what we were going to start first with anyway, aliens. Yay! Freaking love me some aliens. <laughs> I think it, I definitely think aliens are real because I feel like it is really, really dumb of us to think that we are the only species in the entire universe. It seems very egotistical. It does seem very narcissistic as yeah. well. Um, so, like, I just... I think it's very, very close-minded of us. Like, even if it is, like, a really teeny tiny micro-organism, um, there's definitely other life out there. Like, they might not be coming to visit us, which I kind of still think they are coming to visit us. They're probably already here, honestly. Exactly. Um, but yeah, so, that's what we got right now. We're going to talk about, uh, where did my place go? The aliens. Here we go. Found it. So, the first story that, like, kept popping up, kept mm -hmm. popping up, which I saw in, like, a local newspaper, which was kind of adorable, Aww. um, near the place we were staying at, mm -hmm. Ellsworth. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, the Ellsworth American. Where the governor's is. The what? Where the governor's is. Where the governor's? Oh, the restaurant, the mm -hmm. governor's. <laughs> well, one of them, yeah. One of them, because apparently it's a chain. Uh. Who knew? Who knew? Because I sure didn't. Literally never been out of the South. But I made it. I made it out. <laughs> and came, you made it back alive. I came right back, and it's the moment we saw Bojangles, I was like, Sierra, pull over. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. That is not an exaggeration. We looked for it. Yes. And I, she was like, when you see a Bojangles, just wake me up and pull over. <laughs> like, the whole time, I did not see a single one. And she woke up, and she's like, I told you there was not, there weren't any. And then she woke, right after you woke up, there was one, like, what? Like, 15 minutes away or something? Yeah, I spent, like, two minutes looking it up on the GPS, and I was, I was like, like if it, there's anything I can't do, or if there's nothing that I can't do, it's find a Bojangles. Mm. Does that make sense? 
Anyway, I always find the Bojangles. That's how I give directions most of the time. Mm, yes, that's Like, you true. know the Bojangles in the to- headed towards Charlotte, mm-hmm. that one? You just turn right there. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, anyway, back on track. Here we go. Enough about Bojangles. <laughs> They're just the best, and I love them. So, anyway, a group of stargazers were out in Acadia one night. How romantic. Uh, I think it was, like, three people. Yeah. Um, we'll get there. <laughs> so, <laughs> a group of stargazers, skygazers. I phrased it skygazers, but I feel like stargazers is kind of what they were gazing at. Well, I think if you say sky, it probably includes m- more than just stars. Yeah. Um, and they saw what they thought was a unidentified flying object. Oh. And, okay, that doesn't always mean alien. Like, mm-hmm. it, it could mean, like... Just means it's something that's flying. We don't know what it is. Exactly. It doesn't mean it's always an It alien. could be something just normal. We yeah. just don't know what it is. Um, passing over Mount Desert Island and Acadia National Park, which is where they were actually located. They were located, um, they were coming up Cadillac Mountain, which mm-hmm. is the highest peak in Acadia. It's really, really cool. It's pink granite, so the mountain's mm-hmm. kind of got like a pink tint to it. Um, they were going up the mountain, and... Uh, it was about 10.30 at night when they noticed several strange lights moving around uh, the sky to the north. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know which way is north in this room. I just pointed like I knew which way was north in this room. That way. Okay, sure. Because um, they can totally see which they way. They definitely can see which way we're moving. So, anyway, uh, the guy's name was Chong Lim and his wife Judy and several Aww. friends were all chilling about when they saw four round-shaped orange-colored objects that were traveling from Cadillac Mountain to Duck Island, mm-hmm. which are kind of like, a, like a, it, it makes like a line, sort oh, of. okay. Um, so that's what the limb said, that the orange lights were apparently emitting a low vibrating sound, and he has been asking like other he had been like asking other residents if Mm -hmm. they saw anything and Mm -hmm. nobody would like confirm or deny or anything and like would that not be the suckiest thing ever it would be like nobody's telling you what they saw (laughs) if they saw anything because there is such a big like stigma about around seeing like ufos or anything that might be extraterrestrial it's kind of like a given that people won't believe you yeah like it just it just it makes it like people think that like, if they say that they saw something, they're automatically going to be, like, branded crazy or something. Mm, yeah. So, this poor dude and, like, his wife and friends are mm-hmm. just out there. And it's not like they're like, hey, let's make something up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Well, and like you said, people always assume aliens. So, yeah. like, people don't necessarily believe in aliens or they don't want to be associated with, like, the, mm-hmm. the conspiracy or the theory about aliens. So. Yeah. And he, the way he was describing it, because I watched the interview with him, the mm-hmm. way he was describing it was like, it was like ping, like a ping pong ball, almost, oh, okay. like how fast it was moving back and forth, mm-hmm. and almost to like, as if it had no need to like change course or direction, because you know how airplanes, they kind of like yeah. swing wider to oh, make their yeah. turns and stuff like that, but like this thing was just going back and forth and back and forth, mm. and it had those lights, and it was emitting like a really weird vibrating sound, not mm-hmm. like an engine sound, but like a vibrating sound. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the guy said he knows what airplanes, like, sound like because he's been on multiple ones and he's heard multiple ones. Um, because there's, like, an airport over there we passed by. Oh, yeah. So, there's an air, there's a tiny little airport. So, we saw multiple p- planes coming in and out. So, you kind of gather what that noise is. Yeah. Um, and it's definitely not, like, a vibrating noise. Uh, <laughs> what I found really hella weird is two months ago. Two months ago from today, oh, okay. um, there was a video of a very overly excited dude filming. <laughs> like, he was like, whoa, man. And the entire thing is absolutely hilarious. Um, what seems to be, like, he was filming what seems to be. There we go. Uh, the exact description of what Lim saw. Because it is this, like, spaceship looking thing with orange and red lights flashing and it's kind of moving in a weird Mm. way Mm -hmm. um it's like it seriously looks like what i would imagine the hikers saw Mm -hmm. so it's just it the video's a bit glitchy i'm gonna show it to you in a second okay um the video's a bit glitchy but you can definitely see it Uh moving because it looks like it was shot from very far away one and then two it's at night so Mm -hmm. it's a little hard to tell yeah um 
but it's like I said it's a bit glitchy but you guys I put the video on the blog so y'all can see for yourself I'm gonna show Sierra see what she thinks right now so you see it yeah isn't that weird huh yeah that's not like a plane either mm -mm. Because, like, planes have flashing lights and stuff, too. Yeah. But, yeah, it's not like it. All right. So, that was the weird video. Mm. Those lights are just very strange to me. Yeah. I mean, there might be some explanation. I just don't know what it is. But yeah. it's definitely Which is literally odd. the de definition to UFO. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's definitely unidentified to me. Yeah. And, um, but, yeah, so, like, I didn't see, like, any, nobody, like, no government... Mm -hmm. officials put out any kind of report because obs um, <laughs> nobody like else came forward which i feel bad for chong lim because <laughs> he just wants to know that somebody else saw what he saw mm -hmm. um but yeah so that was the wild alien experience which i find very crazy that that happened the the other the youtube video happened like two months ago right yeah because the other one was when was the first one 2013 so yeah. seven years ago i came back Yep. Um, so we're going to move on to the next little part of Acadia. And <laughs> this one, for some reason, I just find very funny. Mm -hmm. uh, because apparently people have been encountering old men with long, mossy beards. Oh. So. That's totally fun. Yeah. Um, they have, like, other characteristics. Um, sure. Uh, not fun ones. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so, and this starts in 1994. So. Great year. Uh, sure. <laughs> I wasn't alive. The so last year I was an only great. child. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> that was so sassy. Oh my goodness. Okay. Oh man. So, yeah, it couldn't have been that great of a year because I wasn't born yet. So. Wow. Anyway. Um, Emily was born. Emily was born? Mm-hmm. That was the year she was born, right? Yeah. This was in August. She was already born. Okay. <laughs> she was in the world. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of other people were also in the world, but... Not important right now. <sighs> anyway, can I go? Mm, any, any other random facts else? about birthdays right now? Um, no, I'm no? good. Okay, all right. So, <laughs> our homeboy Daniel Claiborne. Not Daniel. <laughs> And the group Down, of Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even like a, a, all the way to the freaking period. Okay, yeah. I'm done. <laughs> okay. Our homeboy Daniel. Okay. Let's check back in with him. Um, Go to you, Daniel. <laughs> god fucking bless America. <laughs> Sorry, but it's just so good. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, back to the old men with mossy beards. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I never want to say that again. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Seriously, I haven't even gotten to the fucking period yet. Okay. Daniel Claiborne. Here we go. One more time. Um, and a group of his friends were camping in Acadia mm -hmm. while sitting around a campfire roasting hot dogs. Because Marshmallows. Oh, you have to do the hot dogs first. You gotta have sustenance. I suppose. Yeah, um, they were telling stories and all that stuff about, you know, whatever guys talk about. I've never been to an all-guy sleepover, let alone an all-guy camping trip. No, because that would make it not all-guy. Exactly. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, Daniel literally describes it as a good old boy's camping trip, <laughs> which I can only assume means all sorts of interesting things happening. All the things I don't want to know. Um, as the night progressed, they heard a strange wailing. Daniel described it as like a, like a mixture between, um, you know how deer call each other? Uh-huh. Mixed with like a hog's kind of squeal. Oh, wow. Yeah. So very loud. Yeah. And like kind of bone chilling. Cause like, that does not I sound. don't like pig squealing. I don't either. <sighs> Um, the, they heard it, the, the sound three times, mm -hmm. uh, always three, always three times because, you know, that's half of Satan's number. <laughs> so that's usually how it works. Um, uh, 
Anyway, the wailing sound sounded inhumane and it was high pitched, like I said. Mm-hmm. Uh, about 20 minutes later, three old men came out of the woods. The old men had wrinkled faces. All three men wore tattered blue jean jackets, blue jeans, and plaid shirts. So, hella 90s. <laughs> What what is it called when somebody wears all all jeans? What is that called? It's got a name. Oh. The Canadian tuxedo. Is that right? <laughs> I have no idea. I'm googling it. Uh, I Canadian, can I honestly say that I have never heard of that before I in my life. I feel like it's the Canadian tuxedo. I, I mean, like that's what it's called. I'm not Canadian saying you're wrong. Canadian tuxedo. Yeah. It's when somebody wears all denim. It's called the Canadian tuxedo. Okay. Like Brad Pitt and Britney Spears. Also, free Britney from her conveyor ship. I know you have no idea what I'm talking about. No. Well, that's okay. Sierra's not really in on the pop culture, but that's okay. No. She has me to fill her in on. <laughs> anyway, about the three men and their Canadian tuxedo. I still remember Britney as Crossroads Britney, so. <laughs> The men look like they could be in their early 70s, which, like, what are you guys doing? Hiking in the middle of the woods in all denim in your 70s. Yeah, tattered denim. Tattered denim. Um, Daniel noticed that the old men didn't walk like old men, but walked in a robotic way, which is very unsettling. I do not, I'm not a fan. Mm. Not a fan of that one bit. The three men stopped at the campfire, looked confused, and all three men tilted their heads in an odd way as they looked at the campfire. Like it was one man. Yeah. In three bodies. Oh my god, no. Nope. Just, no. Uh, one of the old men asked, is the fire real? And Daniel <laughs> looked at his friend and was like, yeah. <laughs> Are you real? <laughs> because honestly, they could not be real. Like, they could just be, like, ghost or, like, they have been drinking all night, so they could be, like, a figment yeah. of their imagination. Yeah. Um, but then the three men, after staring at the fire for about a solid minute, which I can only imagine would feel like the longest <laughs> minute in fucking eternity. Yeah. Just dis-a-fucking-peered. God. Like, just gone. Just there, and then not. Yeah, no, he literally, they literally go, we turned to look at each other, then turned back, and they were gone. And apparently there was, like, a really strong kind of smell, Mm -hmm. and nobody would, like, describe what the smell was. Mm -hmm. Like, nobody, the article didn't go in deeper on what the thing was, so I don't know if they described what the smell was. Um, But Daniel said that... His friend noticed that in their beard seemed like moss and didn't seem like human hair. Oh, okay. Um, and he said to this day, they do not know what they encountered, but they believe they encountered something paranormal. So, like, if they did encounter, like, some weird-ass type of cryptid or mm-hmm. if they just encountered, like, a ghost or what, I just don't understand why they would be wearing all denim. Or maybe it was, it looked like denim and it wasn't. Could be. Um... I don't know. Because that's such a weird encounter to have, you know? Well, I mean, but they're close to Canada in Acadia. So maybe it was like, you know, of Canadian people. Okay, when we say Canadian tuxedo, that's not like a real thing. Oh. (laughs) It's like a joke. Uh Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Well... I don't know. (laughs) I guess I've lost my theory out of the water. But we are close to Canada, so there is that. We are not close to Canada. No, in Acadia. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Well, I don't know. I mean, I guess, like, maybe just, like, if it was, like, ghosts, maybe that was very popular, like, attire whenever they died. Yeah, I just find it very strange that they walked in a robotic fashion. Yeah, because ghosts kind of just walk like normal people. Or not even that, they float. Yeah. They described as, like, weightless. So, anyway, I have a theory, but I'm going to wait until I get to the ba- the last part of this so I can tell you my theory. Because oh, okay. I have one more part that it's, I think you're just going to be like, that's it. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, I think it's in this paragraph, actually. So, next we are moving to the Gates of Hell, which... Oh, honestly, where's Buffy when you need her? I've never seen Buffy. Oh, God. 
I watched um, Angel. Uh huh. I loved Angel. Yeah. He was just my shit. I, mean, I also watched Bones because of Angel was in it. Yeah. Um, um, I mean, she is a teenager in it, so there is that. Like, is she? Yeah. Okay. Like the character. I've never seen it. Yes, the character is in high school. Okay. Well, for most of it, then it's the whole college thing. But oh god. Okay. Anyway, you know, like where they want to keep the series going, so everybody goes yes. to the community college. Yes. Yeah, that happened. It's like Gossip Girl. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> We're just throwing out cultural references I don't know that any. the other I one don't doesn't understand. <laughs> I mean, I have heard, I have seen some things about Gossip Girl, but I don't. Just know it was. Chuck Bass, that's all I got. Just, oh God. <laughs> okay, anyway, Gates of Hell, Um, which honestly, I need to find a sticker that says that. Okay. Put it on my car. We um, will get you one. Is in Salisbury Cove. Okay. I don't know if that's how they pronounce it, because that's how we pronounce it down here, so oh. I don't know if that's how they pronounce it up here, yeah. there. like Lancaster. Mm. I know that's pronounced different up north. <laughs> Lancaster. 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 How do you say it? How do you say it before I told you how to say it? <laughs> Lancaster. Lan- Lancaster? Well, maybe. Maybe? Okay. I don't even know. Lancaster? Lancaster? Yeah. Land. Like land, but without the D. Yeah, no. Lancaster. 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 <laughs> um, so, it is located just a little bit outside of Acadia, but there's an entrance to Acadia in Salisbury Cove. Oh, okay. But this story was too good for me not to cover. Okay. Because it's just, it's very interesting. All right. Um, bring it on. So, summer of 2009. Mm. Oh, that was right after I graduated high school. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how old I was. <laughs> All right, so you were 12. Yeah. No. It was 11. Well, okay. <laughs> Depending on what... What? It was summer. Oh, yeah. It's not my birthday yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did you anyway, like that? Thing? I, I really <laughs> love... If you guys could only see the way Sierra looked at me just now, you would have been like, damn, okay. <laughs> All right. Anyway, summer. 2009. We were doing things. I was being an angsty 12-year-old. Um, Megan Whistler. Mm-hmm. That's our, that's our homegirl right now. Mm. Was hiking, because, you know, you're in Acadia, you gotta go hiking. Um, was hiking in this area and came up to a location where she was hearing voices, which, turn around, go away, do not come back. <laughs> you start hearing voices in the middle of the woods while you're hiking. You go away. This is why white people always die in the ho- the horror movies <laughs> because they don't know when to turn around. Mm. You know that, like it's it just well you don't know that because you don't watch scary movies. But anyway, I watch Scream. <sighs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, so she was hearing some voices and they sounded far away, saying, "Help me, G- get me out of here." Nope. <laughs> nope. Seriously? <laughs> what? No. That's a crisis of faith right there. Yeah, no. Some... <laughs> anyway, so she was hearing these voices mm-hmm. and just could not figure out where they were coming from because mm-hmm. she kept hiking and just could not find where they were going, like, where they were coming from. Mm-hmm. Um, but paranormal enthusiasts have referred to Salisbury Cove as the gateway to hell because a lot of them believe that, like, there's, like, a portal there, mm-hmm. which explains sort of why... She was hearing the voices mm-hmm. and why there's so much paranormal activity in this one area or like people seeing aliens, mm-hmm. um, people seeing mossy old dudes. Yeah. You know, um, and then this lady hearing phantom voices, which mm-hmm. is also really, really creepy. Mm-hmm. Very creepy. Uh, but perhaps there is a, po- obviously, perhaps there's a portal located in this area because there's also reports of strange <laughs> genetic experiments at a um laboratory always there is a lab in this area the mdi lab the um uh, oh yeah the mount desert island uh, biological laboratory mm. so we went we drove by that did we yeah huh i don't remember seeing it yeah we drove by that like a bunch of times hmm. i don't remember seeing it. it had like a big sign I think it was blue or gray, and it said MDI. 
I was like, what the heck does MDI stand for? Mount never... Desert Island Biological <laughs> Laboratory. Yeah, I never really, I don't know why I didn't put two and two together about that, because I saw MDI, like, everywhere, and I was like, what the heck? Yeah. Well, par- I, sh- I put the pictures on the blog so everybody can see, because this complex is fucking massive. Oh. Like, it is really, really big. And on their website, I was looking it up and, like, reading all about it. This is what I was doing right before mm-hmm. we started recording, and they do, like, all sorts of limb regeneration and um, extending life mm. expectancies and stuff like that. So that's what, like, the public knows about. So who the fuck knows, like, yeah. what kind of other genetic kind of stuff they're fucking with. Because Shapeshifters. Exactly. Because um, a hiker... Free them. <laughs> a hiker, another one, I don't know what this hiker's God, name was. All the hikers. Well, I mean, we are in Acadia right now. All right. So made a claim that he came across a dog that looked like a German Shepherd. The dog acted scared when he saw the hiker, and he noticed that he had a small head growing from the side of his neck, and that his um, small head had eyes, nose, and a snout. And then when the hiker tried to get closer to it, the dog ran away. Mm. So, kind of sketch right there. Yeah. Um... So next, on this kind of like little little cryptid genetic experiment kind mm-hmm. of thing, yeah, we're gonna move to a um, another sighting of something that uh, people are encountering is black cats with glowing red eyes, and three there's four of them apparently that have been seen. Three of the black cats are, were like normal house cat size, mm-hmm. um, and then one of them. Sorry. One of the cats has been, like, the, the size of a fucking panther. Mm. That's, like, a big leap. Yeah. From house cat to panther. Yeah. That's a big fucking no, jump. No, thank you. But, like, what I don't understand is if people are seeing these things, mm-hmm. why is there no name for it? Because, like, cat, black cat with glowing red eyes uh. needs its own cryptid name. Right. Like, pronto. Yeah. I don't know. And I kind of feel bad for this puppuccino, the German Shepherd. Yeah. I just want to take it home. But, um... We live all your heads. We do. Uh, anyway, so they saw this giant fucking black cat with glowing red eyes, Mm -hmm. which honestly, no thank you, and I'm so glad I did not know about any of this before we went, because (laughs) I would not have only been scared of that, how tall, how high up we were, Mm -hmm. but I would have been, like, locking the doors, making sure there was no giant freaking cats following (laughs) us around, no old men with mossy beards, I would not have recommended we'd gone hiking. (laughs) Whenever you say that, for some reason, I just think of, um, Angela's dad. Who? From, Angela's dad from Bones. Every time you say that. Oh, ZZ Top. Yeah. See, okay, yeah, no, I was thinking, like, Duck Dynasty. Oh. (laughs) <laughs> but no that kind of fits in because they're wearing like um jeans and stuff yeah and mostly and the like, duck dynasty you could never camel. like see him mm-hmm. really mm-hmm. like his face because mm-hmm. he always has the glasses on the hat thing and then the beard yeah. just everywhere yeah i mean it's beautiful it's very well groomed but it's it still a, a lot nice beard. i watched a documentary about zz top the other day mm-hmm. i have an obsession with documentaries it's just kind of my jam. Mm-hmm. I don't. I make Sierra watch quite a few of them. <laughs> Every time she goes on to Netflix or something, she's like, "Ooh, another documentary," <laughs> or and, or it's like, "God, I've watched all of these." Yeah, I seriously, I can just go down the list and nope, watched it, watched it, watched it, watched it, yeah. watched it. All the suggestions is like, no, I've seen that. <laughs> um, but it's it's kind of hilarious how many I've watched because. Every single time they add a new one, I'm just, like, instantly. Yeah. But, um, anyway, back to the giant fucking cats with red eyes. No, thank you. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what's, what's strange is, um, when they heard, like, because when they saw, when they came up on these cats, mm-hmm. um, one of the, like, people, and it was, like, a pack of hikers, mm-hmm. or, like, three or four um hikers okay one was name was june um she heard like a, a kind of like hissing sound mm-hmm. which i'm a cat sitter i'm a dog sitter i'm mm-hmm. an animal whatever kind of animal i'm a sitter and pet a, sitter pet sitter there we go that's what i was looking for <laughs> the overall term <laughs> uh 
Um, no. So if a cat is hissing at me, I'm just going to be like, no, thank you. I'm just going to turn around, ignore them, you know, like you do with animals. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just kind of go about whatever I'm doing. I'm not going to interact with them. June sits there and tries to call them over because she is at this point is only seeing the tinier black cat. Oh, it's like a mama bear in her cubs. Yeah. But the cats only seem to be interested in watching her. Mm-hmm. Um, you know how cats just kind of, like, creepily yeah. stare at you? I'm watching this one cat now named Toby. Um, she's a very, very chunky black cat, and she just kind of watches me from the upstairs. Like, they have, mm-hmm. like, a little overlook, and yeah. she'll just stare down at me petting the other cat. She won't come down for me to pet her as well. She wants me to come to her, but, like, she will, like, glare at me until I come upstairs to pet her, which is all I'm imagining. Like, these <laughs> cats, like, why aren't you coming to pet me? So, yeah, no. Uh, also, it's very un- unsettling to hear one cat hiss, but to have three of them do it. And she said yeah. it was very loud and very echoey, which mm-hmm. is another reason, like, I'm going to need a cryptid name for these guys. Yeah. I searched the interwebs, but there was nothing. That's a letdown. <sighs> it was. But, anyway, the fact that they're only interested in watching them. So, it's, they're just like, we're going to look at you so you don't run away. Yeah. Like, from afar, we're going to look at you. So, you're not scared of us, but we're still keeping an eye on mm-hmm. you. Yeah. For later. <laughs> yeah, no. Not a fan of that. Um, but, <laughs> June finally got some fucking sense <sighs> and left the area immediately, constantly looking like, over her back for the black cats. And June makes the claim that the panther-sized black cat had red glowing eyes, but they changed to, like, a yellow glowing. Mm-hmm. Um, which also might go into the fact that they are doing s- experiments Yeah. in the area because you never, like I said, you don't really know. Like, you yeah. know a little bit, but they're not releasing everything. Like you they probably never know, like, 10%. Yeah. So, that's what I have for you guys. Well, um, but that's apparently only the surface because like I said, I fell into like a six hour wormhole <laughs> of this. This is six hours of notes and this is me trying to trim it down and trim it down because like I said, if I was like continue talking about mm-hmm. this, the, the mossy old beards alone, mossy old beards, the mossy old dudes <laughs> with beards, whatever, how are you? The old dudes that? with mossy beards. There we go. Thank you sometimes I can't even get my sentences straight. Um, that alone just, like, sent me. Because it just, it, I find it very unsettling. And I was reading, like, another report of somebody saying that, like, if you see one, expect to see the other two eventually. Oh. Because they're never too far from each other. Gotcha. And, like, the floating, they were never floating. They're always walking in, like, a very robotic, very stiff kind of way. Hmm. And it was never, like, a... A stroll or anything and they always looked out of place um but so this we, like, we what do we know that walks like that i don't know birds kind of walk like that <laughs> they do <laughs> <laughs> i don't think that was it <laughs> you know like emus walk weird emus are just weird birds in general are fucking terrifying so yeah there we go i've said two of my big fears heights and birds um, one time we were on, like, this, uh, it wasn't, like, a safari, it was, like, the zoo thing, I don't know. Exactly. Oh, like, the Lazy Five Ranch kind of deal? Um. You, like, sit in the, like, a hayride, and you, like, go through, and, like, uh, feed animals and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, we, the emus or whatever, eat, um, dog food. No way. Yeah. That doesn't seem safe. I don't know. Also, alligators eat dog food. Okay, that also does not seem okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where was this? Uh, in Florida. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, where else? <laughs> oh my god, that is fucking hilarious. Of course it's in Florida. <laughs> um, that, I do like... I don't understand, like, how one state can have so much like going on (laughs) like all the time i don't know man it's just wild or do they just have like crazy good reporters like i well um arrest records in florida are public which is one of the reasons why okay we have access to what we have access okay um 
yeah, so I, th- I think it's just, one, the heat, and then there's not a lot going on in Florida. Like, there's the beach and Disney, but there's not, like, it doesn't seem like there's I a bunch know. of other things to do. I mean, which like... Wendy, uh, Wendy always tells me that there's not a bunch going on, so... Huh. I mean, the, maybe just people just don't have anything better to do with their time. And I then mean, the arrest records are public, so we... We see what's going on more. Mm. Literally, my favorite thing to do is search my birthday and then followed by Florida man or Florida woman because the things that you got. I always up with. like saw that and like never actually tried it. Oh, it's so funny! Oh my goodness, um, I think I think it was Ricky's, my younger brother, my my youngest brother. Um, we searched his and it was like Florida man through um, alligator through the window of a McDonald's <laughs> to pay <as> payment. <laughs> And they probably like, okay, thank you. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> so, yeah, I just, I find it absolutely hilarious. And if I'm really bored one day, I'll just, like, search it and try I gotta and see do what that it one is. day. Well, as soon as we get off of here, I'm searching <laughs> your fucking birthday. Um, anyway, let me finish this last little word. Okay, sorry. No worries. Um, where was I? That is all I got. That's it. That's everything. Except for, apparently, in Acadia... There are a bunch of missing people. Oh, no. Like, people just, like, fucking disappear. So, I think that follows along with the fact that there might be a portal and then aliens. Um, I didn't get too much into it because, honestly, I could not fall down a fucking other wormhole. Um, Mm -hmm. But, apparently, there's just, like, people go missing at, like, a bit of a higher rate than they would. That also might fall into the fact that it is a hiking area. It is Mm -hmm. very dense. And we saw how dense it is. The woods are pretty dense. Um, and it is a pretty big place. Yeah, so, it is a really big place. Like, the, the park itself is just, like, expansive. It's very big, and, um, that goes with the fact that I just said that the forest was really thick. Uh, so maybe just, like, inexperienced hikers, um... Inexperienced hikers mixed with the portal, mixed with shapeshifters, <laughs> mixed with big cats. Yeah, mixed with fucking aliens. Aliens. So I might, um dive down into that one Mm -hmm. day i'm I'm gonna add it to the board over there but who knows i might i might not i mean that's really sad because most people are probably like on vacation you know how many people go missing in national parks every year it's like a fucking lot of people a lot of people go missing in national parks every year wow so it's it's apparently like a thing as I was reading about it, but... I mean, I guess on the one hand, it, like you said, it does kind of make sense, but it's also, like, terrifying. Mm-hmm. And really just sad. It's very sad, because well, they're out to have a good time, and then all of a sudden you're like, where's my loved one? Yeah. So. And, like like I said, most people are on vacation, so it's not like, you know, that's, like, close to home. Mm-hmm. Gosh. I mean, missing people in general is just terrible, but, like... Yeah. It's supposed to be, like you said, a good time, and then they're just gone yeah so that is everything again i have for you guys i know i said that like four times but <laughs> we just we just got off we'll edit out two of them it's fine no we're gonna leave kidding. it all in it's gonna be fucking fantastic <laughs> um but yeah that's that's my case this week no, of Acadia like, national I'm park i'm definitely glad that you waited until <laughs> God, I am too. After. After our creepy... Okay, guys. This... Like, we... I just need to share this. We had a very creepy Airbnb. We were right... Because we're not there anymore, so it's fine. Um, (laughs) We are no longer there, so you guys cannot triangulate our location. There, at least. Um, It was very unsettling. We were right on the water. Um, It had a beach, and I use that word very lightly because (laughs) that was not a beach. It was, like, straight up rocks and ocean. Yeah. Um... And seriously, when the fog came in, I understand why Stephen King is a scary motherfucker. Mm, well, yeah. he's not scary. He seems like a joy. His books are so terrifying. Yeah. Um, because that fog was so thick, and it did not go away until, like, 1 or 2 in the afternoon. Yeah, that is the thing. It stayed for a long time. Like, it came in at night. Mm-hmm. And then it stayed for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, we, I just got, like, a really unsettling feeling while being there, and... Um, our friend Emily, she, like, she had stuff move around on her. I had things that I, I know I turned on, like, the fan. I know I turned that motherfucker on. And we got home and it was not on. My, um, 
what was it? Was it Emily's charger? Mm-hmm. Emily's charger had become unplugged, even though she had just plugged it in. Her watch, her eye, eye watch? What is that called? Um, Smart, whatever the... Apple I, watch. Apple watch. I don't have any iPhone kind of things, as you guys can tell. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that was moved or something like that. Mm-hmm. So that was really wild. Um, when you walked in, it had a very strong, like, metal smell. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't I don't know how to describe it. Like, kind of like a wet... Like, you said, like, you put, like, if you were licking a quarter. Like, if you licked a quarter and you smelt it, that's what it smelled like. Or, like, really strong, just a really strong iron smell. Mm. Like, how blood kind of smells. Mm. Um, you smell a lot of blood? I mean, I am around children all the time. <laughs> um, always getting hurt. Always, always, always. But, and then upstairs just kind of was, like, a really heavy kind of feeling. And a, like, in certain spots in the bedroom that we were staying in, um, it had a very strong old lady smell. Mm-hmm. Your, the bedroom you were in was completely fine. Yeah. For the, it, yeah. It was yeah, fine. it was. <laughs> like, the bed, it had, it had, like, a twin mattress on, on it. Mm-hmm. But then underneath the twin mattress was an even narrower twin mattress. Oh. <laughs> so like the bed was like leaning yeah and i felt i had to like lay like right against the wall because i felt like i was gonna fall out oh my goodness see um i was on i was on like the regular kind of, it was like a full a full size bed yeah um and then emily was on the floor on a queen size air mattress mm-hmm. um so like i would and it was so strange i told you this when we were there every single night i would wake up at 2 30 something oh god and then like how weird is that and i about died at two oh yeah she did about die one night about two thirty. she had some like like i don't even want to talk about it because it was it was just terrifying yeah. um but maggie woke up every night as well it was just very unsettling so <laughs> we got in the car and i was like we need to get home to my crystals right now. <laughs> I need to put some good positive vibes out into the universe. Um, we don't need to bring whatever that was home with us. We don't need to give it energy or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it was just very unsettling Airbnb. And Emily, bless her heart, waited until we got halfway down the road to tell me. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> because I told her she was gonna tell me the night that we were there. Yeah. I was like, do not like need to give it any sort of energy i don't want to know until we are far far away so we were in the car for like three hours and about an hour and a half into that she told me (laughs) but yeah Yeah. that was our very enjoyable (laughs) (laughs) it was an experience it was i saw a very tiny crab it was very cute that was so cute we named him carl yeah um but yeah we had a great time i really loved maine a seven lobster rolls during the time we were there. <laughs> My goal was 17, but we just didn't have enough time to eat that many. Yeah. Um, Vermont, we, oh, I freaking loved Vermont. It was mm-hmm. beautiful. Yeah. Um, we went to Massachusetts and New Hampshire. That's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, <laughs> uh, we accidentally ended up in Gettysburg. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was asleep. You were dead asleep. It was 2 o'clock in the morning, Pennsylvania. Um, which I'm about to sound really dumb. I did not know that Gettysburg was in Pennsylvania. Yeah, I mean, it all kind of blends together right I there. I seriously so. thought it was in Virginia. Like, mm-hmm. I would have gone, like, I would have gotten into an argument with somebody because I thought it was in Virginia. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so we, ended, we ended up there at, like, 2 o'clock in the morning. I took some pictures while Sierra was in the car. I did not leave Sierra in the car. Let me make that very clear. Yes, you did. No. Okay, I stood right outside the car. <laughs> no, you could see the car in her photo. So yeah, there's I that. did. She was like, you left me in the car. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not leave you in the car. Um, Maggie was there also, living her best life. She would have eaten somebody if they tried to take me. Yeah, Maggie is very, very protective of mm-hmm. us when we're in the car. Mm-hmm. She, she gets very scary. Um, very, Even, like, places that we go all the time. All the time. She gets... She doesn't care. She it's does like, not appreciate when people approach the car. No. Uh, so, that's super fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so that's all I have. I'm all talked out. All right. Well, we hope you guys have a fantastic week. Um, yes. I have a, a busy week for my job. I have this thing called a live-in mm-hmm. where I go to somebody's house and I stay 24 hours. 
for multiple days. So mm-hmm. that's what I have this week. I have about 100 things that I have to get she done. She was telling me all the things she has to get done at her job. And it's just, we're going to have a very fun week. Um, we are going to see, or not see you. Um, we will be back in your wonderful ears in two weeks. Mm-hmm. So um, that kind of keeps with our schedule. Three weeks on and one week off because we need our mental health. <laughs> um <laughs> We have a few things we have to get done. A few things. Um, And then it it works because I won't even be here. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's where we're at right now. I Like I said, I hope you guys have a great week. And check out our blog for all the pictures and the wonderful videos. And if you guys want to follow us, Sierra, do you want to plug all of the things? Yeah, sure. So, we are on Instagram. Yep. And Facebook. Where can they find us at? Paranormal Podcast. Yep. And, um, oh, if you want to listen to our stories on YouTube, you can also do that. Sierra does an awesome job and makes us a cute little video. Um, it's awesome. So, you guys can listen there if you want. Um, we're now on iHeartRadio. Yay! Hey, y'all, hey. (laughs) Um, but where else can they find us? Oh, well, you can, um, email us, uh, paranormalpodcast at gmail.com. Um, we would love to hear your stories if you've ever, like, been to Acadia and, like, oh, yes, experienced please. anything. If anybody saw any Mossmen, please, I need <laughs> to know more about them. Because I only found, like, four things about them that I really, mm. really, really, really need to know more. Yeah. And if there is a cryptic name for the black cats, well, let me know. Right. Yeah. And, um, oh, we have a Patreon page. We do. And I've worked so hard on building our tiers and organizing everything and certain tiers get exclusive access to episodes a day early when we can post a day early Mm -hmm. this kind it was kind of a chaos um but there's a whole bunch of fun things on there for you guys so please check us out yeah show us some support i tell us uh, tell some great stories she does and you get to (laughs) listen to a wonderful story time with sierra uh where she tells us all sorts of crazy folk tales yep and then <laughs> my segment, Screaming Into the <laughs> Void with Emily, where you guys give me topics to rant about, just look us up, Paranorm Podcast, yeah. on the interwebs. Yeah. And we will see you, not see you, why do I say that? We will be back in your wonderful ears in two weeks. Have a great two weeks. Have a great two weeks. Do something fun or not. And let us know. Watch some Netflix. <laughs> yeah. Email us. Walk, watch a documentary. Oh, yeah, please. Oh, yeah. you can send us any of your suggestions. We'll see yeah. if there are any... Any kind of cool suggestions you guys have, anything you want me to cover, true crime or paranormal, mm-hmm. or if you're just like, hey, girls, don't call us girls, though. It's just gals or women. Um, but, yeah. Well, well you can right use now. our names because that's why we have them. That is true. <laughs> Thank but. you. All right. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Bye.